Steam locomotives in miniature at the Steam Workshop. This one's all about refitting the steam regulator to a large 7.25 inch gauge steam locomotive. During the hydraulic test of this locomotive, it was impossible to keep the pressure in the boiler because most of the water made its way through the cylinders and out of the drain cocks, so it was obvious that there was something wrong and it needed attention. When I first looked at the regulator, I thought, well, this is a bit odd. It looks like a commercial tap from a washing machine or something, and that is indeed what it is. That turned out not to be the problem anyway. The problem was a broken pipe from the regulator valve at the front of the boiler in the smoke box. And this is the main fitting for the wet header. This takes steam from the boiler, passes it back through the fire and then to the cylinders. And you've just seen me cleaning up the wet header and now I'm fitting a gasket to it. This is one that Dave made last week. This clip shows the piece of copper pipe that threads into the regulator mounting, which is in my left hand, and the other end of this pipe screws into a fitting that holds the wet header in place. In this clip, the shiny bit of metal that's going into the smoke box currently is the part that John made. This is the wet header mounting, and this is the part that originally broke. There was a big crack in it, which let all the water straight through to the cylinders. But this new part is a considerable improvement on the old part, in as much as it isn't cracked, and it has an integral o-ring to seal it. With the superheater element in place, I can now fit the regulator, and here it is, going into the centre part of the boiler. Before I fitted this piping, I coated all the threads in Loctite 542, and I'm using a socket with an extension bar to screw the threaded wet header fitting into the wet header bush on the boiler, and at the same time, it's screwing the pipe into the regulator. And as you can see in this clip, the regulator fits quite firmly onto the end of the pipe. This is the rear part of the mechanism. This is a long stainless steel rod that operates the regulator, opens and closes it, and it emerges through a hole in the back head. But it's not just a rattle fit in this hole, it has a fitting. And this is the original fitting. I've cleaned it up a little bit in the lathe, but the only way to tighten this in place is to use the gland nut and put a spanner on it like this, which puts a lot of strain on the gland nut. And I'm really not happy with this. The gland nut thread is a bit chewed up too, so it's time to modify it. I gave the part to John, who put it in his dividing head in the milling machine and milled a hexagon. So now it has hexagon flats on it, which is far better. And at the same time, we also fitted a new gland nut. What I find a bit odd about this was the original thing that I'm playing with here is a quadrant that stops the regulator from moving too far. This regulator valve is 90 degrees from off to on, just like the water valve that it is. What I find particularly odd about this arrangement is that this quadrant was originally just a push fit on the fitting that was screwed into the boiler with the pressure of the gland nut only. And from my point of view, that is a very poor, unmechanical solution. This is a little bit better. I drilled two holes in the quadrant opposite each other, marked out the positions on the bush, removed the bush, threaded the bush, and then screwed them in position. And once everything is in position, and I tighten the bolts because they're a bit slack at the moment, the 90 degree travel of the regulator will be perfect. With the regulator in a vertical position, the valve is closed, and as I move it to the left, the valve opens. In an earlier clip, you may have noticed this thing sat on top of the firebox wrapper. If you didn't, here it is again. On the majority of miniature steam locomotives, boiler feed water from either the injectors, the hand pump, or the axle driven pump, generally enters the boiler through a pair of clacks, or check valves as they're also known, on the back head. But this locomotive uses a different method. It uses a top feed system, where the feed water is fed into the boiler through this fitting at the top of the boiler. If you look at the two holes, one in each side of this fitting, that's to accommodate the clack valves, and these are special clack valves that connect to the two pipes on each side. The only problem with this arrangement on this particular locomotive is, as the water comes in from the pumps, it's going to go straight out of the regulator down to the cylinders. So that part on top of the boiler, and I'll show it one more time, and this component acts as a diffuser. It stops the water from pouring straight into the boiler and straight out of the regulator. In this clip, I'm putting it all back together. These are M4 bolts, and they are M4 stainless steel bolts. You can see that the bolt to the left of the socket is very rusty. This is one of the original bolts that were very difficult to remove, because the problem is that the bolt holes go all the way through the bush into the boiler. So it's no good putting steel bolts in there. That's why I'm replacing them with stainless steel bolts. 
In this clip I'm using an M4 tap just to clean up the thread because it didn't feel good when I put a stainless steel bolt in there. It felt very rough and a bit too tight. So to all the beginners out there who may be building steam locomotives, I'd just like to suggest that you do not use ordinary steel bolts anywhere near the boiler because they will go rusty and from a serviceability point of view, when you come to remove them, they may shear off. So it's best to use stainless steel bolts or even maybe phosphor bronze bolts, but that's a bit of a softer metal, but it's not as soft and weak as brass. You must never use brass bolts for securing boiler fittings. Brass doesn't rust, it's just too weak. And also, if it's in contact with the water, you can get problems with the brass de-zincifying, which means it gets even weaker over time. Rebolting this mount into the engine is not difficult. I'm just being very careful not to put too much pressure on the bolts, and if they start to feel tight, I simply clean the thread using a tap. Most of them were OK, just a couple of them were tight. There was a problem with the bolt, though, right at the front, and at some time that had sheared off in the hole. And then someone came along and tried to drill it out using too big a drill, so there was no thread left for the M4 bolts to go into. The only solution that's really practical in this application is to re-thread the hole using an M5 tap and then fit an M5 bolt just in this one hole at the front. At each side of this fitting there are two countersunk bolts required, but we didn't have any of these M4 countersunk bolts, but luckily in my workshop I have some of these and I'll bring them in next week. The reason that these two bolts have to be countersunk is just to clear the two clack valves that screw into the side of the main assembly. In this clip I'm tightening up the M5 bolt at the front of the fitting and just checking that the main cover fits in place, which it does. But when doing jobs like this it's always a good idea to check everything as you go because it's really bad if you finish the job and then find out that the main cover doesn't go in place because the M5 bolt is too big. And that's it for this job so far. Unless one of the members of the Steam Workshop team decide to do this job without me being there, then I'll have nothing to video, but I don't think that's going to happen, and I need to bring in my two M4 countersunk bolts, put it all back together, and perform a hydraulic test on the boiler. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.